The second half of the Quick Fix British Touring Car Championship season is underway. We're at Croft in North Yorkshire, round 16, 17 and 18 of the championship this weekend. And Ash Sutton is the man who comes here as the championship leader. Whether this is going to be a front or a rear wheel drive circuit, we'll find out over the course of the weekend. History is on the side of rear wheel drive machinery. Today's evidence favours front wheel drive cars. The lap is over two miles in length. The championship first came here back in 1968 and Ash Sutton comes here this year as championship leader but after his dramas in that final race at Alton Park so the championship is now perhaps a lot more competitive than people might have expected going back to let's say Snetterton in May. So Ash Sutton for the Napa Racing UK team is the driver in charge but snapping at his heels Tom Ingram who is second Jake Hill is in the mix still for third and Colin Turkington 13 times a winner here uh, is fourth it's Dan Camish next ahead of Josh Cook the newly married Adam Morgan seventh and Dan Robottom rounds out the top eight so qualifying is a few moments away it promises as ever to be another fascinating session around here and uh, so the cars will head to the track for their qualifying period once the next support race is done. Timetable slipped a little bit here at uh, Croft with one or two earlier dramas, uh, but uh, we'll be able to get the drivers to touring cars very shortly indeed. Two free practice sessions this morning largely went without drama. Uh, we had the occasional car off the circuit. And Tim, this is a circuit that always gives good racing. It always gives us plenty to talk about. I'm afraid to say one of them is always track limits. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's hope that doesn't become a feature. I'm sure it's going to factor into qualifying and the racing because it always does. There are three points at the, on this circuit where they've got uh, judges of fact, exit of turn one, which now has gravel right up to the edge of the track so if you see a puff of dust it pretty much says you've been over track limits uh, the exit of the Jim Clark S's which has always been a, a tricky point because the cars are carrying so much speed and the exit of Sunny Out where in fact it's quite self-policing because it, uh, it it pretty much slows you down anyway on the dirt but yes it's it's going to be a, a factor in qualifying coming up soon. Now, we've had a few shuffles within the uh, entry list. Uh, one of them is at One Motorsport. Will Powell has uh, stepped down for the championship's balance. And uh, Jade Edwards returns to One Motorsport. As somebody said this morning, you found your old overalls, have you? But Jade is back with the team. Uh, she's a good fit. She gets on really well with Josh Cook. Uh, Aidan Moffat likewise. So she'll be uh, very pleased, no doubt, to be back at a team that she had some good results with uh, last season. Uh, we've also had some shuffles at Team Hard. Uh, Nick Hamilton, sadly, not racing this week. Weekend. Michael Kreese returns to the championship from a season of GT racing or a part season of GT racing. But also, history made, the first Filipino driver within the British Touring Car Championship debuts this weekend at Team, Horde. He's at Team Hard. His name is Daryl De Leon, and earlier on in the day, he talked after FP1 to Steve Ryder. Daryl De Leon, welcome to the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship at 17 years old. My goodness. Explain your route into this opportunity. I don't know really, I wasn't expecting it. Well, I mean, we're racing with Team Hard and Beck and we're doing everything with there with the Porsche, the Audi, and then to get a text message overnight saying there's an opportunity, it still just blows my mind really. So, yeah, and especially at such a young age, it's not, I don't think it's that common for drivers to come in at such a young age like myself. Um, but I just, I want to learn as much as I can from it, so. But before the Team Hard Academy and that, everything that that produced, uh, what was your motorsport experience? I mean, how did it all start? Uh, it first started when I was three years old at Rye House. Um, I got first got in the car, couldn't reach the pedals, so then I had to start properly when I was eight. So from eight years old up until now, I've just been, well, going through the ranks really, karting, uh, well, tested cars here and there. Uh, started car racing, testing car racing, 15 years old, and now obviously, and yeah, that's that's it really. Eight years of karting, so yeah. And uh, what experience have you had behind the wheel of a touring car so far? We weren't able to get out in the first free practice today. Uh, the first, well, the only experience I've had is a tyre test. So, and that well, that went really well. Uh, FP1, we had some issues, but we're fixing it now, so we'll be back out and ready for FP2. Tyre testing is one thing. What do you expect? the qualifying and race experience to be like? I have no idea, honestly. I just, I just want to learn as much as I can from it. Uh, I've got no expectations. Uh, but yeah, like I said before, I just want to learn from it because it's all new to me, so it's all new experience. And long-term ambitions within the sport, is it 
touring cars? Is it GTs? Is it F1 or what? I don't, I don't know really. I haven't really thought about the direction, my path. But yeah, I just want to do whatever I can to be on the grid. So it's uh, well sustainable for me financially and everything like that. And I mean, touring cars is one of the best routes. I mean, just look around, all the, all the, all the support, all the fans, the atmosphere is amazing. So yeah. And you're here for the balance of the season? Yeah. Good. You will learn a lot and it's great to have you on board, 17 years old. Thank you very much. <laughs> all the best. It's certainly going to be uh, quite the baptism of fire for Daryl De Leon. He's never raced here before, and it's the toughest championship in the UK. Expectations? Um, well, look, it's a learning weekend for him. He, he has driven the car at the uh, uh, Dunlop tyre test, uh, the Goodyear tyre yeah. test, sorry, up at um, uh, Donington Park on the Grand Prix circuit, which we visit later, and he was very rapid. And he comes from a background of, of radical racing, British Endurance Championship, where he's driven an NGTC car, the old Audi S3. So it's not completely unfamiliar for him, but a huge learning curve. Now, qualifying getting closer to kickoff uh, at home watching. Jason Plato has just sent us a message saying five quid, says Josh Cook for pole position. Could be a good shout. Also watching at home, uh, Louise Goodman, who sadly isn't with us this weekend. Lou, get well soon. Uh, and as we head towards qualifying, there is Tom Ingram, who heads towards the car. He was the man that topped the times at the end of FP2. He's another candidate for pole position. And uh, Steve spoke to Tom Ingram earlier on in the day. Tom Ingram, welcome to the second half of the season. Just six points behind Ash Sutton. I bet you can't wait for this second half to get underway. It's all getting a bit close, isn't it? Absolutely right. The second half of the season always brings a sort of a, another another hit of uh, another hit of hard work, really, because you sort of start the year. You, you know, you try to do all your prep over the over the off season. You hit the ground running from then. You kind of have the summer break, and it all feels like a, a mini off season in a way. So we come into the second half of the season looking forward to it. Uh, we had a good test when we came to Donington. Uh, three or four weeks ago, so I feel in good shape. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, yeah, let's wait and see how it uh, how we can start the second sec second half of the year. As long as we start it strong, uh, but really I think it's just a case of consistency is going to be key this year. Making sure we're we're there or thereabouts all the way through the year. Con consistency has been the key right throughout this year. I mean, just six points behind. I think. People look at that and they look at Ash Sutton's winning record and think, how on earth did he do that? Yeah, and you know, I think that we we we. We've maybe sort of been overlooked in terms of how well we've done this year because, as you said, Ash has been Ash has been going around winning every single race. It seems we started calling him Max Verstappen, um, but uh, we've just been slowly going about our business. You know, making sure we're seconds, thirds, fifths, fourths, whatever we can pick it up, and just make sure we're there or thereabouts. So, yeah, we're in good shape. Uh, the the key is to stay that way, not try to to reinvent what we've been doing already. We've resorted to sort of standard school playground bullying tricks to sort of slow Ash down, we start calling him names, we're chipping him over in the playground, we're, we're flushing his head down the toilet, but we'll wait and see if it all works. You're getting more and more like Max Verstappen now. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. But look, they've had a, they've had a great start to the year. Uh, we've just got to make sure that, that we can uh, we can sort of slow that down in the second half of the year. Yeah, one aspect of the second half of the season, you had that tyre test on the Donington Grand Prix circuit. You were quickest and the team was quick. How much uh, are you looking forward to the Grand Prix circuit at Donington? What do you make of it? It's great. And, and we've obviously driven the national circuit no end of times over the years, and we're all very comfortable doing that. But actually, when you go to the GP circuit, it's amazing how, how different it feels. With only a couple of extra corners, it completely changes the, 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 the dynamic of the circuit. I've always enjoyed it. I've driven GT cars there. I've raced other bits and pieces there, so it's not new to me. Uh, but it's always good to go somewhere different, especially in a, a known car, to suddenly spice it up with a with a different circuit mixed into it. It's great. I think the racing will be better for it because we've got two extra big braking zones. Well, I think we're all going to struggle on brakes, but that's a that's a that's a story for another day. But uh, it's a circuit that we're, we're going to like. Uh, it's a good it's at the good stage of the season when we all start getting to, down to the nitty gritty and we all start looking really into the points. Uh, so yeah, we'll wait and see. Like I say, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get through these first couple of weekends, uh, the second half of the season, and. Uh, See where we end up. Yeah, before Donington comes a rather contrasting challenge of Knockhill and Croft here. Uh, how much do you enjoy this place? I've always loved this place. I've always, always loved this place because I don't know. It just feels it feels very different to everywhere else. I think it's because it's quite narrow. It's quite tight. There's bumps. There's there's all sorts of stuff. So it feels almost more like a go kart circuit. But I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge of it. Uh, and likewise with Knock Hill as well. You would go to Knock Hill and it's a complete contrast from any other circuit we seem to go to. It's more like a roller coaster than it is a race circuit. So. 
two good circuits coming up, uh, two circuits that we, we should be strong at. We tested uh, both of these pre-season. Uh, granted, we were here in February and March, which historically is never a good time to come to the north of England, but um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a tricky day. But uh, as I say, two good circuits that, 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 that should be strong for us, so we'll, uh, we'll hopefully hit the ground running. No problems at all for Mr. Consistency. We'll wait and see. Cheers, Tom. Thanks, now, of course, we also have the hybrid to factor into all of this, not only in terms of who has got what for qualifying, but also what difference it's going to make around here. So in terms of who has what per lap, one second only for Ash Sasson. Tom Ingram, three seconds a lap, five for Jake Hill, seven for Colin Turkington, nine Dan Camish, 11 for Josh Cook. Uh, Adam Morgan has 13. Everybody else has 15. Tim, around Croft, how much of an impact will the hybrid make, especially qualifying? It's a big difference. Um, I know I've said it in the past, and we've still seen Ash Sutton on yeah, pole the last three races, um, but it should make a big difference here. You know, we're talking 30-odd horsepower they can use it coming out of crucial corners like tower um, coming out there coming out of sunny out um, and 15 seconds uh, is 14 seconds more than Nash Sutton's got it should make a big difference now Michael Kreese returns again to the championship <laughs> uh, he keeps doing these sort of part seasons but he's back he takes over one of those team hard entries and again earlier on in the day he spoke to Steve Michael Kreese, welcome back. We've said that a few times over the last few years, but uh, how are you looking forward to this weekend? Oh, honestly, so good to be back here at Croft. And the sun's just coming out. We had a little bit of rain in the FB1, but it's just amazing to see how many people actually turn up, and especially on a Saturday, you know, and this... Uh, yeah, I, I just feel like this is where, where I belong, do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, you talk about the sort of family atmosphere of this paddock, and it's it's genuine, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And I started my career in touring car with Team Hard, and it, it was a very family feel. And obviously, I've gone off and done other stuff, and I've never quite had that sort of that feel at any other team. But I've come back here, I've just been accepted straight away. And uh, I tell you what, it's a, it's a different outfit to what, what I remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... In what sort of way? What is the contrast as you return? It's just uh, everything is so well organised. The staff is, is fantastic. I mean, the team of my car have been incredible, hard working. You know, Matt Neal, my driver coach, is, is, is doing a bit of coaching with me today. And uh, it's just it's just a level up uh, from, from where we were at. And it's just a credit to Tony and Sam for all the hard work they've put in, uh, you know, to get this team to where it is. And, and, and we've now got front running cars, do you know what I mean? So uh, a little bit of time in myself. I'm still a bit rusty, but hopefully I can do the team proud this weekend. Well, it's great that you're working with Matt. I mean, what on earth can he teach you? Well, he's <laughs> honestly like, I, I sort of like look at him like this, and like, he's like, well, get over here, do this, do that. And he's just such a, I, I, I've got a good relationship with Matt over the last couple of years. We've been speaking and, and he's, he's, he wants to give me a good shot. And he said to me, you, I don't think you've had the right ch chance yet. So it's great to work with him. He's, he's been really helpful so far. And uh, we're, we're only just entering the weekend. So I think with his knowledge and the, the data and that's what we're going to go through, I think he really pushed me on. So what is the future plan? Is this one weekend or a big comeback or what? No, I'm back here at Team Hard for the rest of the year, for sure. And we're working hard with Gary and Tony to try and cement for next year because I just I feel like so happy. I've, and, and I think the more I feel relaxed, the better I'm going to drive. And, and uh, you know, let, let's be honest, I'm probably not going to win a, a, a touring car championship, but I definitely want to fight for some wins and some reverse grid wins, you know what I mean? So. And you've got a 17-year-old teammate. I mean, that makes you feel old. <laughs> oh, mate, I couldn't believe it when he wrote down and he's date of birth I was like oh god I feel, maybe I should give up but uh, now nah, he's, he's a nice lad I mean he's uh, he's come in he, I, I can't believe they're a different breed they're just they're so relaxed they're so he, did, he, he walked in there I said you right, mate he's nervous no just like cool as a cucumber but I suppose they're coming through aren't they so they have to move over at some point they haven't got your experience <laughs> well yeah not in maybe in racing but not in other stuff <laughs> good to have you back yeah, cheers. cheers Michael so, is it going to be six in a row for Napa Racing UK in terms of pole positions? Well, the cars weren't necessarily the fastest this morning, but qualifying is always a completely different beast, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, you've got to factor in that, uh, that hybrid. Dan Camish of the uh, Napa Racing guys, he's got quite a lot of hybrid available, and so has Dan Robottom. Yeah. So, uh, they could certainly capable of pole but it'd be fascinating to see how he goes uh, Jake Hill comes in under a massive uh, rich vein of form nearly taking all the points possible at Alton Park with his um, two wins and three fastest laps um, so we'll see how they go um, good to see
see the championship contenders having a little chat there. And I, you know, following that interview um, uh, with Michael Kreese, who gave um, credit to Matt Neal um, for being here, and I, you know, I think it's worth saying this is only three years after Matt Neal's father, Steve Neal, the founder of Rimstop and Dynamics, the team that went on to win uh, six championships, three each with Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden. And I'm sure the, the whole BTCC community wishes the Neal family um, all the best and uh, condolences at the loss of Steve. Such a big figure in the British Touring Car Championship for so many years. Yes, both as a driver in uh, his day in minis and uh, as a very important figure running Team Dynamics so successfully for so many seasons. Uh, and uh, yes, Matt is here, as you've heard. Now, let's get another thing out of the way. Is this a front-wheel drive or a rear-wheel <laughs> drive circuit, or does it? can you not tell anymore? Do you know, it has really changed over the years. Um, there's Jade Edwards, uh, ready to get back into her um, car. Uh, interestingly, this is a completely different car, although she was obviously at, at um, what was BTC Motorsport. This is now one motorsport using the X Dynamics cars, with, yeah. which are different chassis, different engines, Neil Brown engines. And also there this weekend, and we think for the rest of the season, is Barry Plowman. Yes. So he's overseeing yeah. the cars that he ran at Dynamics last year. He's overseeing the team. He's also got a bit more of a responsibility over Aidan Moffat's car. But Jade Edwards, good to have her back at the One Motorsport squad. And and uh, again, Steve caught up with Jade earlier on in the day. Seconds. Jade Edwards, a mid-season switch from Team Hard back to One Motorsport must feel like coming home. Yeah, Steve Dubman actually texted me yesterday and said, oh, how is it? And I said, if I'm honest, it's, it doesn't feel like I've left. You know, it's, um, it's where I've spent most of my touring car uh, career so far. So happy to be back. Um, if, like you say, it feels like home. Um, and it's, it's a pleasure to finish the rest of the season with this team. How did, it, how did the switch actually work? I mean, you had a frustrating uh, few weekends with, uh, with Team Hard. Yeah, I mean, I can't fault Team Hard as a team and effort themselves. They put 100% in, but we were, as you could see, we were on the back foot from the word go. Um, and it actually happened completely amicably. We all realized that there was a situation where we could all gain from it in different areas. And not often a driver and a team say, oh, it was an amicable, amicable split and mean it, but this genuinely was. Um, Tony was happy for me to come here. Um, I was happy for him to replace me at that, that team as well. So in various ways, it, it benefited everyone. And it's genuinely, we're still friends with, with Team Hard. I've seen a lot of them today. And I'm very good friends, obviously, with my sort of home team. So overall, everyone's a winner. Well, that's good to hear, but as the frustrations mounted at Team Hard over the first half of the season, were you starting to, to fear about your future in the championship and the direction you were going? Yeah, I mean, my priority is to look after the sponsors that essentially pay for, for me to be here. And we all knew that it was going to be a tough season with the, the signing being so late. But yeah, there were times where I think there was a clip of me where I sort of hit the top of my car at Thruxton after a DNF where, you know, I was, I was more feeling for them. You know, they've invested money, big money, and it wasn't being spent correctly um, but we've now switched over we're, we're not expecting miracles we, we've got some personal targets we want to hit but uh, we, we're just in a much more secure position um, and all my sponsors are happy back with the team that they they know and love but what is the chemistry that uh, uh, that you enjoy here with with Josh and the whole team that's around you at one motorsport I mean I think it, it benefits that you know Josh Aiden and I all get on very well so that starts the core of the team but we all know each other so when we're now in year say three of my my career here um, we all know how each other work so it just becomes like clockwork and it's a lot easier um, I've even had a little text from Jason last night and gave me some tips which just pure, ignore him. Pure Jason, you know, it involves something about uh, coconut oil or something. So take what you want from that. But yeah, you know, it's just a brilliant environment here. It's a family environment, but also very professional at the same time. And those personal targets for the second half of the season, are you going to share them? I just need to score some points and I want to get some Jack's ear stuff. You know, it's the same old stuff, but we had such a, a tough start to the year that those were almost out of reach in itself. So, yeah, it's the same, same usual stuff. I want championship points and I want a little Jack's ears trophy as well. Okay. Enjoy what remains of the season. Thank you. Jay, thanks very much.
It is great to have her back in uh, One Motorsport and the uh, qualifying session we are estimating is about three minutes away uh, with earlier delays and not only today running qualifying sessions but also some of the support race package um, cars from that have to be retrieved so things have, have dropped by about 10 minutes so uh, we are imminent I think drivers are now in cars teams are in the pit lane ready to get things underway and very shortly cars will be making their way out onto the circuit uh, and all the drivers talk about what a challenging lap Croft is it always delivers drama as uh, there on his phone Mickey Butler heads up the pit lane the man uh, from uh, Goodyear and quickly deviates away from the camera to go and talk to clients. Uh, uh, tires around here, do we expect any any dramas? We don't really, do we? No, there's not. It's it, apart from sort of uh, uh, hitting curbs or putting cuts in tires by cutting across the inside of the curb. It's not a. Uh, this is the reason partly for the delay. One of the little legends cars being picked up. But yeah, it's it's not. It used to be quite an ab uh, abrasive circuit with a lot of tire degradation, but we just don't see that anymore. That was one of the reasons. Going back to our chat earlier about why it was considered a rear-wheel drive circuit, because the front-wheel drive cars would suffer quite a lot of degradation during the races. They just don't do that now. The tires are so good. The teams are so good at setting the cars up. We don't see it, but. Um, interestingly, out of free practice, we were one second away from the quickest from pole time last year. Yeah. So I'm not saying that necessarily gave us a good indication, but uh, it was actually Colin Turkington who was on pole here last year, wasn't it? So we'll see what the times are. They're all on the medium tyre um, for qualifying, which is the same tyre they raced in, on last year, so the times are comparable. Um, but of course, tomorrow it'll be one of the two races. We tried it uh, before at Stetton, where they will have to run all three competitions pounds in one of the races the soft the medium and the hard so that's something to look forward to in tomorrow's races just seeing one of the one motorsport mechanics there saying cut the engine so i think we might be a little bit further delayed uh, before the session gets underway uh, jake hill good to go uh, a, a conversation was being offered from one of the wsr people earlier in the weekend to me about uh, ash at alton park saying well he didn't really need to fight jake because jake's not in the championship battle well after those two <laughs> wins he is now he those, is those now. words might come back to haunt Ash. yeah and ash of course um uh, committing a little bit of harry carry with uh, his yes. third race blunder of driving into uh, opposition tom ingram and the pit wall i think something he probably regrets himself now there was a blot on the copybook wasn't yes. there at the end of that weekend so with the uh, pit lane to open imminently and then the uh, mad scramble to go out and try and find clear track space, Aidan Moffat there, good to go. Uh, and a quick word about the winners last year. Dan Lloyd took two wins, but of course then he was in one of the Accelerate Hyundais. Now he's in a Team Hard Cupra and Gordon Shedden, not in the championship this year, was the reverse grid winner. So front wheel drive cars across all three. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure they're going to win all three races this weekend, but we'll see. But... Yeah, yeah, interesting. Remember, a couple of years ago, it was actually uh, Ash Sutton and Jake Hill who had that moment at the hairpin, wasn't it? That was another one of Ash's rare, and yeah. we thought non-existent now, um, sort of moments of lapses of, of percentage play, shall we call it. But in a way, good that he did it because it's really spiced up the championship going into yeah. the second half. And it's amazing for all these people that keep saying, oh, you know, he's going to run away with it. Only takes one bad race. Yeah, and it's, it's all changed. It does, because Tom Ingram has been so competitive, yeah. consistently banging in those seconds and third places. Mikey, Mikey Doble, Doble ready on to go, board. Yeah. Um, look, just doing a little bit of visualisation, as we so often see drivers just thinking their way around the lap, um, getting ready to go. Some drivers do it with their eyes closed. He obviously doesn't, but he's ready to go. And I think um, Power Max and uh, have been one of the revelations, shall we say, of the first half of the year. Um, the team of Andrew Watson, Mikey Doble, um, and uh, Aaron Taylor Smith, I, th I think, have really outperformed them. Remember, they're the oldest cars on the grid, but they've been updated, some aero mods at the front, and they've been very competitive. So, errant legend retrieved. Hopefully that can turn sharp right here and take the, if you like, short circuit straight back to the pit lane. And therefore engines can fire up and Ian Watson, the clerk of the course for the British Touring Car Championship, can allow the uh, lights to go green at the end of the pit lane and get things underway. Tip for pole, quickly. Oh. You hoped I was avoiding that question, didn't yes, you? Yes, you always come back with that question. <laughs> and, and I haven't got a favourite. I mean, I'm possibly going to say Jake Hill. Okay. Who's your tip? I'm going Josh Cook. 
Okay, that's a good tip as so well. So Tom Ingram for pole then, probably. <laughs> yeah, this, probably. Right? Yes. Uh, we shall see as the sixth qualifying session of the season is about to get underway. Again, just to make the point, every pole has gone the way of Napa Racing UK thus far. Dan Rowbottom at Donington, Dan Camish at Brands, and then Ash Sutton, three on the bounce across Netterton, Thruxton, and Alton Park. So why didn't we tip Rowbottom, Camish, or, or Ash Sutton for the pole? I don't know. We're trying to look outside the box, aren't we? Indeed. Green flag is shown. We are in business. And as you look down the pit lane, you kind of expect a dorsal fin to go down there in a moment, sort of imposing as the cars go out. But it's the BMWs there that head out onto the circuit. We are in business, and it's the BMW fleet out first. Yeah, and as always, remember, they will not have to cross their tyres over. They don't go through the same tyre-warming exercise as the rear-wheel drive cars. And despite the quite long lap and the uh, uh, multitude of corners and the warm weather, the front-wheel drive cars will still cross their tyres over um, to get some uh, heat in the rears. Particularly here on a front-wheel drive car, that right rear is the coldest tyre, and you need to lean on it really hard there to get a good exit from the chicane. We were looking at cars in the pit lane, also looking at cars in the collecting area, just to make the point, there aren't enough garages at Croft for everybody in the championship, so some of the teams have to, if you like, camp out in the paddock, and they will join the session from the assembly area once everybody has left the pit lane, so they end up being a little bit later out on track. Jake Hill then trying to get warmth into the tyres as he goes then uh, through the Jim Clark S's down towards Barcroft, and the clock ticks on down. Yep, Jake's been a busy boy in the break, though. He was racing a super touring Nissan Primera to victories. Look, other cars only just coming out of the pits. That's from the assembly area. Um, he raced a, a super touring Primera, won at Brands Hatch in their sort of historic meeting. Um, he was also at the uh, Goodwood Festival of Speed doing some timed runs up the hill in a Nissan Skyline. So he's been a busy boy. And he also drove the Nissan at the Donington supercar driver secret meets as well, didn't he, to get his eye in ready for Goodwood. So, uh, yes, he has, as you rightly say, been very busy. Lots of uh, people from the touring car paddock found something to drive there. So, up towards the timing line, uh, breaking the beam, and down towards Clairvaux Corner, Jake Hill vigorously trying to get the warmth into the rubber. Colin Turkington uh, back into the pit lane. Yeah, we'll just get the first look at the exit there, the, the gravel right up to the edge of the track. And... And you see the onboard here, four angles on board uh, facing him, facing forwards, um, and out the back. A really good selection of camera shots for you on board with Jake Hill there. Still warming his tyres. Remember, the BMWs do take a little bit of time to get that heat into all four tyres um, to get them perfectly up to temperature. And of the BMWs, we often see that it's Colin Turkington who is the last to really bang in a good time. But he gets there, but he's slightly out of sequence with the others. Yeah, I was talking to, once again, to uh, Adam Morgan's engineer, Steve Farrell, the sort of dry Auss Aussie. Yeah. And he's just in awe of uh, Colin's data and how he works out to minuscule precision amounts how to get the best out of the car and then delivers it from behind the, the, the driver's seat, at the, behind the steering wheel. Um, very, very professional, complete driver is our Colin Turkington. And that was a fabulous performance of his, wasn't it, in, uh, at uh, uh, Alden Park to come yeah. from last on the grid uh, in race one through to winning race three. And everybody says, oh, it's too narrow, can't overtake round yeah. here. Ugh. And Colin has other ideas. Right, target time about to be offered up by Adam Morgan then. Uh, 128.153 is that opening salvo, but it means nothing because he's the only person to have done a lap, and it's about six seconds off what they were doing in free practice. So there is plenty more to come. And, of course, some of the front-wheel drive cars are still cycling through the pit stops and crossing over the tyres. So there is an awful lot to play out of this session thus far. 26 cars we will have. Yeah, and I noticed that Adam took a fair old chunk of the first corner um, down at Clervo. Oh, big lock up there. Jake Hill, Jake, isn't it? Yeah, it is. See, the tyre's just not up to temperature yet. Do you remember a couple of years ago when Colin Turkington locked up the fronts into Turn 1 and went straight on? Yes. It takes a while to get those temperatures up. Um, but Jake clearly hadn't got enough in there to, uh, to r commit to a fast lap yet. Well, he's at the he's top on of the board. Times, for what it's worth, yeah. This he's starting a fast lap. He goes really wide to get the line in, but just carries too much speed in. Now, do you approve of this gravel, or would you rather have the runoff tarmac? No, I approve of it because right. it's self-policing. The okay. drivers know if they go off, there's a penalty to them yeah. in terms of there's no advantage to go quicker. So, yes, I do approve. 
few. So, <laughs> for once. No, no. <laughs> Hurrah. You heard it here first, everyone. He approved. Uh, right, over the timing line, Connie Turkington still working the tyres, and uh, that puts him... Uh, onto a flying lap now. Adam Morgan goes through once more, should go quicker, and he does. He's into the 23s now, a 1.23.8. So he's still over a second shy of what was happening in FP2, but we are getting there. Plus, we've yet to see the wave of front-wheel drive cars going for a lap. Well, the front-wheel drive cars will be going for a lap in the next lap or so, so uh, give it another minute and a half and we'll get some uh, front-wheel drive lap times. And remember, they deliver their time very quickly. Or virtually on lap one of their of their flyers having crossed it so jade edwards back into the pit lane to have that tar cross there is her expression as she waits for the car to be released george gamble goes down towards clevo he's on it he's sideways he's caught it but that was all a little bit ragged so george gamble as ever maximum commitment but almost came a cropper and, th and that's exactly why the gravel works, because you could see him avoiding running wide. He fought the car. He didn't just let it go yeah. wide and gain an advantage. He had to fight the car to keep it on the track. So, at the moment, we've only got two times. Adam Morgan and Jake Hill are the drivers that have established one, but there's a lot more to come. 24 minutes of the session to go. Only once this year have we got through qualifying without a red flag. I'd offer <laughs> you ju just out of interest. Well, that, uh, that ensures we're going to have one now, then, doesn't it, David? <laughs> Coming to the very end of that, this is the real tight section. Um, such a contrast, this circuit, between really fast first three quarters of the lap and then the, the last slower part of the lap where you really have to sort of not overdrive and control the car. So Jake Hill goes through, and that is the fastest yet, 1.22. 429, that is the best time of the day by a hundredth of a second. But still a second off what uh, Colin Turkin did for pole last year. Yeah. But we'll see quicker times, I'm sure, to come. And remember, Jake really didn't do his tyres any good, did he, on that uh, first lap? So I don't think they will be in the best condition. Dan Robottom up to second. So there's your first Napa racing time, 1.22.7, three tenths down on Jake Hill. Don't forget, Dan Robottom has got 15 seconds a lap of hybrid, whereas Jake Hill's only got five seconds a lap. Yeah, teammate Kamish uh, joins him on the, uh, in the top three with third place. And Ash Sutton is currently fifth. Uh, we've yet to get a lap out of Tom Ingram of any consequence as you ride again with Jake Hill. So from the Jim Clark S's down towards Barcroft, that's Sam Osborne, who is on a flying lap, but yet to do a time, getting out of people's way coming out of the right-hander of Clairvaux corner now. Dan Robottom, absolute best in the first sector. So Robo, 32, the Napa Racing Ford with the full hybrid allowance. There he is. He's down in the middle sector, which I fear was because of traffic, but the lap started off OK. Yeah, it certainly did, but as you say, there was a lot of traffic right in the middle, wasn't there? And that's just, this is the problem with sort of people on slightly different run programmes uh, coming out of the pits, doing some going slowly, some already up to speed. So 22-4 to beat, and uh, Dan Robottom is the fastest on a 22-7, so provisional pole position, an absolute best, a slightly slower middle, and a personal best in the last, but add it all together, and it's good, it's quickest, and Ash Sutton's had a lap time disallowed. Right, I need to start my list now of lap times <laughs> that are disallowed. Here we go, Sutton's the first. Yeah, so it's all coming in now, Robottom quickest at the moment from Camish by two and a half tenths. Stephen Jelly, the fastest of the BMWs at the moment. The first race tomorrow will be his 250th, so he'll want to qualify well for that. And he's third place at the moment, ahead of Chilton, who pops up in fourth, Dan Lloyd in fifth, um, Taylor Smith sixth, and Butcher seventh at the moment. We had that errant team hard car in the replay, spinning coming out of the chicane. Jade Edwards' car, I think, being dropped down, ready to go. Josh Cook up to second, and another lap time is being disallowed, and it comes for Sam Osborne. So we've had one for Jake Hill, one for uh, Sam Osborne, one for Ash Sutton. And so those are the three thus far. So the order is Robo, Cook, Moffat, Camish, Lloyd, Andrew Watson. Uh, Tim was touching on the pace of the Power Max Vauxhall Astros earlier on. Well, Andrew Watson, uh, who's not raced here for a long, long time, back to his Ginetta days, he's sixth. Yeah. Circuit's quite dirty, isn't it, everywhere? Turkington, the fastest BMW so far, pops up in second, just three hundredths away from Robottom's time. So it is indeed the Ford. Jake Hill now goes quickest of all, 122.447 by a tenth. So again, five seconds a lap of hybrid, still being able to beat the people with 15. 
so far. Yes, <laughs> for now. <laughs> Absolute best by Tom Ingram, first sector. So Tom Ingram in the middle of the lap, he is thus far absolute best sector one so it's hill rowbottom turkington cook moffat camish good to have aiden moffat up there it was here that he got his one and only pole position wasn't it a couple of seasons back but 10 minutes of the session about to be completed and tom ingram is the man to keep an eye on as you look here at colin turkington this lap for colin started off okay with a personal best and we're going to get ingram's second uh, sector split at the moment it hasn't quite come up yet just looking on the time machines, but that was very fast on the first uh, sector, the person, the p quickest of anybody. I'm slightly confused as to why Ingram's middle sector isn't being shown, almost like yeah. he stopped somewhere, because he should be back at either the end of sector two or over the timing line by now, unless the transponder has got a problem. Uh, up towards the line comes Colin Turkington. Let's get him over the line and we'll worry about Ting in a moment. Colin Turkington breaks the beam and that lap keeps him third. In the end, it was slightly slower, a 126.138. Yeah, uh, Tom that's Ingram what... is stopped down at Sunny. The car is moving very slowly, looking at the GPS tracker, but he's crawling around yeah. Sunny. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So did he have an off through the Jim Clark S's or something? There's the car. Looks, looks, a bit... looks OK, doesn't it? I was going to say, does it look a bit dirty around the tyres, like yeah. he's been exploring the grass? Anyway, uh, Ting's had a, a slow middle sector and he's heading for the pit lane dexter patterson lap time disallowed george gamble lap time disallowed now the car looks okay to me there's no grass in the front splitter or anything but Clock clearly figures. something not right and, but he was on a very quick lap yeah. as we saw so the middle sector was over two minutes not the lap the middle sector yeah. was over two minutes he must have stopped and had to do a reset yeah so an electrical problem, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, if the tyres were looking a bit dirty, it's because he drove off the road in order yeah. to perform that, perhaps. Anyway, uh, we'll try and unravel it all. There is Colin Turkington, who is on a slower lap, down in one and down in two in terms of sector times. Who else is pushing on? Dan Camish, personal best in the first sector. Also, Ronan Pearson in his Hyundai. And Dexter Patterson, two personal bests as well. That's Daryl De Leon, who is 22nd out of the 26. And another lap has just been taken away from Ricky Collard for track limits. Yeah, I uh, introduced uh, or said hello to Daryl De Leon this morning and asked if he was excited about making his BTCC debut. And clearly not a historian, he asked who I was. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say I'm Jason Plato? I said I'm the bloke that talks about you, so you need to be nice to me. <laughs> I wonder whether the BTCC has always been mainstream viewing in the Philippines. Uh, there in the pit lane is a rather concerned Accelerate team trying to look into both Tom Chilton and also Tom Ingram's cars. We're heading towards the halfway point. 17 and a half minutes are on the clock. Outlaps coming for Ash Sutton, who is only eighth at the moment. Also, Mikey Doble has gone back out and then came back in. George Gamble had a pit stop and stayed on the road. Turkington still hustling on. And this lap's got potential. Personal best sector one. Yeah, the car moving around a lot through Sunny, wasn't it? So we can tell that's on the limit because you don't see Turkington's car moving about that much unless he's really pushing on. Absolute precision coming through the complex. Needs to get a good final exit here using that rear-wheel drive traction. Remember, the BMWs are the only rear-wheel drive cars in the field since we got rid of Subarus and Infinities. Coming across the line now, he's going to, will it make him any quicker? He puts him up to second. Um, eight hundredths off teammate Hill. So it's BMW, BMW, uh, Ford, Honda, Ford at the top. So at the moment, the uh, rear-wheel drive cars are are in charge. Lap time disallowed for Jade Edwards, so that means that she is now without a lap time and goes to the back of the grid behind Tom Ingram. So Jade needs to put a banker lap in. And here is Jade Edwards. Right, talk us round Croft, Tim. Uh, well, it's a great driving circuit. The differences in corners and uh, technique required. Here's the last part of the, the track, which is probably the least enjoyable to drive, but the most technical, not to get it wrong. Um, if you're starting a flying lap, you hang back and get a run through that final hairpin to get a good um, launch onto the start-finish rate. She's finishing a lap, so um, she, didn't, she took the normal racing line, 
Her lights are on, that means she's on a quality lap. You can cheat a little bit on the way into Clervo there, taking a bit of the entry into, and she just kissed the gravel there, and that's the indicator of track limits. Because remember, if it's any part of the tire goes over the track, it's an offense. So we'll see how, how rigorous the judge of fact is. Daryl De Leon is now officially a British Touring Car Championship driver. He's had a lap time disallowed for track limit abuses, so he's now <laughs> part of the gang. Hey, so they don't do that in club racing, where, <laughs> <laughs> where I have been. Uh, but yeah, he's part of the gang. Yeah. Right, Tom Ingram is now, because Jade went 25th last time around, Tom Ingram has just rejoined the session, but is at the back, and Jade's had another lap time disallowed, so she is now at the back. And that would have been for that little yep. kiss on the, uh, on the gravel coming out of Turn 1 between Clervo and the uh, and turn two. Right, this is Colin, uh, Colin Turkington, who is now the fastest. He's done a 122.422. That puts him up to the top of the times. We're into the second half Not of for long. the session. He's had that lap taken away. Yeah, That's right. So Turkington has lost a lap for track limits. Now Jake Hill back to the top. Oh. And if you, uh, if you share our frustrations about the, the track limits and things, because they're all using the same, they're all driving the same circuit, um, it is very frustrating. But them's the rules. So Jake Hill on his way back into the session, comes down the pit road. Now, what else for Dan Robottom? He's still in the pits, but he's the best non-BMW driver at the moment. Let's talk about Sutton, because Sutton, the man's been on pole the last three times, is down in eighth place. Now, I know he's had lap disallowed, but we maybe haven't seen the best of him. He's seven tenths off the pole time. Yeah. Well, the, the lack of hybrid is not worth seven tenths around here. It's probably worth about three or maybe four at the absolute most. So we know there should be some more time to come from Ash. This is Rory Butcher coming up towards the timing line. 15th he is in the uh, Speedworks run, Toyota Gazoo Racing UK Corolla. And as he heads up towards the timing line, let's see whether this is going to be an improvement. It needs to be, yep, only to 12, though. Uh, Rory with a new engineer for the rest of the season. Rich Benson has uh, departed from the scene. And Jack Coker, Speedworks stalwart, has taken over engineering Rory's car. And as I say, he's just improved up to 12th. That turn one, it's so difficult not to nick a bit of extra on the inside, but the kerb there is really aggressive and upsets the car, but especially for the cars, the driver sitting on the left-hand side of the car, it, you're really quite unsighted to that, that apex kerb. So if you watch through here, we've got Jack Butello, if you're going to see turn one, but we're back onto Mike, Mikey Doble as he completes the complex section, down to first or second gear for this, one of the slowest corners in motorsport, apart from the island hairpin at Alton Park. He gets a good exit out there. Let's see how his uh, lap time unfolds. He crosses the line and he's in 16th place. Yeah, I don't think he improved, did he, no. that time around? Oh, no, he no. did. A 23.627, but he stayed 16th. Stayed. So better lap, but didn't improve the grid position. Rory Butcher here. Uh, Tom Ingram. Ingram has gone 7th. Yeah, Rory Butcher down in the middle sector, but a good start. Yeah, so Ingram with a banker lap in, at least, into 7th place. And Sutton has done the absolute best in the first sector. Rory Butcher bails for the pit lane. Oh, Sutton, here we go then. Absolute first in yeah. sector 1. Wow, and that's a place where you do use the hybrid, so he is really on it. Look at Kamish coming out of the pit lane, staying well off the track to allow cars through. It's a bit of a dodgy... Oh, he's got Jade Edwards in front of him, coming up to the end of the lap. It's a personal best in sector two. He's run out of hybrid. He's used it all at the start of the lap. So Ash Sutton coming up behind Jade Edwards, who gets out of the way, does exactly the right thing. Ash goes by. The time to beat is a 22.4. Here he comes then, out of the hairpin pulls the trigger, fires the car up towards the timing line. It's a 20, it's a 21. What can Ash Sutton do then as he breaks? The beam goes quickest of all. 122.412, 35 thousandths of a second quicker than anybody else. Uh, this boy. And, and then Josh Cook goes even quicker. Sorry to interrupt you, but Josh is 74 thousandths quicker than Ash. Wow, what a pair of laps from those two. <laughs> Remember all those years ago when they were MGT mates in the, the formative years of touring yes. cars and look Look at them now, right at the top of the tree. Uh, two fantastic laps there, but wow, Ash Sutton with no one second of hybrid. What a lap. Now, Sutton's not done yet because he's done another absolute best sector one. Oh, he's on it again. 
on the second lap. Can he make the tyres last? It's the last section where you really need the front tyres for traction in the slow corners. Um, can he make them last? But as you say, just 74 thousandths of a second between them. And in terms of the magic second, it is the top 16, all covered by less than a second. Here he is coming up to that last second where you need section where you need all the front end you can possibly get. He's used all his hybrid. Look at the graphic. He hasn't got any left for the burst out of the out of the chicane. He's used it on the other sections. Coming up to the line now, can he find that magical? He was did a personal best in sector two. Is it enough? It is! He goes back to the top! Oh my goodness, by 19 thousandths of a second. Another storming lap by Ash Sutton. What's Cook doing? Because Cook was behind him on the... He hasn't... Cook is not going quickly on this lap. So Cook hasn't got another lap on this lap to beat him. No, Josh Cook's into the pit. Here's Ash Sutton then down towards Tower Bend. So, where is the next possible change going to come from? Quick word about Ronan Pearson in his Hyundai. He's 11. That's a really good effort. Very good effort, indeed. Very good. Jelly, as we talked about earlier, he slipped down to 12. Um, what other? Moffat, uh, he loves his place, doesn't he? He's Ooh. eight. Oh, no, we got Nick Halstead off. We have Fortunately, indeed. Fortunately, not into the barriers. And that is coming up towards the complex. We can just see him out of our window. So Nick Halstead has had a big lose. That's going to bring out a yellow, which in turn is going to mean people have to back off a little bit. But he's going already, so hopefully... Come on, Nick, get that out of the way so we can pull the yellows in. Otherwise, it will spoil the end of people's laps. He's coming up to uh, the complex now. Does he get on the grass on the left or...? Just turn it. Oh, turned in too quick, yeah. and the right rear was not having it. It was here that he made his debut, wasn't it, uh, when he replaced Rick Parfit for a weekend. Ash Sutton has had a lap time disallowed, but I don't think it was one of his pole laps. I think he's okay to still be at the top, but he has just lost another lap. Yeah, it would have gone already, I think, from the timing screen, if that was the case. You say hesitantly. Yeah, I did. Like, the, like the, me, the, I'm watching, watching, the graphic watching. just suddenly changed. It changed <laughs> colour, <laughs> but fortunately, he stayed at the top. Right, ah. this is Jake Hill, who did a personal best sector one, slightly down in the middle and up towards the timing line. So you've got to be aiming at a low 122 now. This is looking decent. Up towards the line, it's a 21, it's a 22.4. So fractionally down, stays third quickest. Yeah, no hybrid left again, did you see, for the run to the line. So they're clearly, bearing in mind they've got 15 seconds, they're obviously using it out of the chicane, along the back straight, out of tower, to on the run down to Jim Clark S's and on, out of Sunny on the uphill section up to the complex. That's all 15 seconds worth. Any other improvements? Any other quick sectors? Are we got Adam Morgan uh, is on a personal best sector yes. one, so he could be one to watch. And there is Dan Camish, who is currently sixth fastest. Another lap taken away, Ricky Collard. That's his uh, second offence of the session. Camish hustling the car through that chicane. Dan Robottom, absolute best in the first sector. So Dan Robottom has gone quickest. Adam Morgan has lost his lap for track limits in 33 BMW. But Robottom is now the man to watch. No, Camish's teammate <laughs> has beaten him already in that first sector. So the two Napa racing cars, Robottom and Camish, both on fast laps. Robottom through to the end of the lap. What's his second sector been like? It was a personal best as well. So these two are really on it. Yeah, Kamish was 600 faster in the first sector. He's not yet got to the end of sector two. So Ro Robottom should improve to where and for how long. Here he comes. He's left hybrid for the end of the lap. He goes through and he goes quickest of all. Robottom are 122.292, 27,000 up. And here comes Kamish, two purples. Kamish fastest of anybody in the second sector. So that's two purple sectors. He's just got to tie this last one up. Different line for Kamish, a much tighter line round the hairpin. Has that compromised his exit speed on the run up to the line? Let's see, here he comes then, breaks the beam and goes quickest, 122.126 by 0.166 of a second. It's a Napa Racing 1, 2, 3. Now, Kamish, Robottom and Sutton. What on earth were we doing betting on someone other than a Napa Racing car being on coal? I can't, I can't <laughs> I have no idea. What do we have for lunch? It clearly affected our brain. Well, you said Cook, he's first of the non-Napa cars in fourth. I said Hill, who's fifth. 
so we weren't far off. If you took the Napa racing cars away, we'd look like we knew everything about yes. touring cars, wouldn't yes. we? However. <laughs> However, <laughs> oh, bit of a moment there for Camish, wasn't there? Um, Camish and Robottom slower on this uh, second lap on those tyres. So Dan Camish by 0.166 of a second. We've got 15 all within one second. We've got five and a half minutes to go. And Dan Camish and Dan Robottom both slightly down in the subsequent sectors of this lap. So as the cars come down towards the conclusion of the session, there, only sixth is Colin Turkington. Somebody else we haven't really touched on, but deserves a big cheer for being seventh, Aaron Taylor-Smith in the Vauxhall. Yeah. Uh, both Aaron Taylor-Smith uh, and Andrew Watson have been great qualifiers oh, this year. I agree, yeah. I mentioned earlier on that Jason Plato was Ooh. watching at home and he's very impressed by Ash Sutton's driving. That is Daryl De Leon, who has gone into the tyres and that I would fear is going to bring out a red flag because he's occupied most of the runoff area there. Definitely, with just under five minutes to go when the, it will get stopped, I'm sure they'll reset yeah. the clock with five minutes to go. Um, but fortunately, he looked like now looked like he'd scrubbed off a fair bit of the speed before he actually got to the tyres. Here's the red flag, um, and uh, well, I think we're going to go past the car in the tricky section. This breaking into uh, Sunny Inn, and you can see the the lines going off the road. He's yeah. just got the car moving about, breaking and turning at the same time. But he fortunately did get a fair bit of speed off. Here we come. Look, he just comes gets too much speed coming through that turn as he gets on the brakes off it goes it was traveling at some speed at, he didn't scrub it? off a lot of speed no it, when i saw it even in slow motion he looked like he was going a lot faster <laughs> but the final impact let's go for the final that okay. looked fairly gentle now jake hill has lost another lap for track limit abuses uh, but daryl de leon is okay that's the good news and uh, hops out of the car and as tim was suggesting if we have a red flag within the last five minutes at the discretion of the clock of the course the clock can be reset for full five minutes now you know we were 10 minutes late starting there is a curfew here but we'll see what uh, ian watson's decision is in terms of the best sectors dan camish has got two and colin turkington has got one but it's dan cam who currently has pole position and the clock has indeed been reset at five minutes yeah, and as, as I was alluding to, um, front-wheel drive cars having the fastest first two sectors, but the rear-wheel drive, Colin Turkington, um, despite being sixth fastest, actually has the fastest final section where the rear-wheel drive cars can really use that traction to gain time. So, yeah, an interesting split, certainly. Um, so five minutes will be on the restart and uh, not much time difference. It was only at four minutes 39 yeah. anyway, so uh, not very different. So talk me through these five minutes, because by the time you've gone back out, tyres will be cold. How long does it get them back up to temperature? Do you still have time to do a tyre cross? Do you have to do a tyre cross? You don't really have time to do a, a full tyre tyre cross, but you certainly have time to put a pair of new front tyres on if you're a front-wheel drive car and the rears won't lose too much heat. Or you could put the fronts that are on now on the rear hot and put a pair of new fronts on. That way avoiding having to right. do a cross. But we, you know, it's not, it's quite a long lap this. Um, so one, and, one minute 22, but by the time you You've got out and gone round there's not going to be too much time left but certainly we've we've often seen times improved in that last five minutes and the track evolution the track actually isn't getting slower if anything it's it's getting quicker so i, I don't see why any reason why people couldn't go quicker in this last five minutes so lots of cars coming down the pit lane jade edwards you can just see there in the middle of the uh, shot and Jade, 25th, a little oh, bit frustrated pleasure. to say the least. Wants to be going quickly, but circumstances conspiring again, partly because of a couple of laps lost for track limit. So she knows the pace is there, can't quite unlock it yet. Yeah, she needs a clean lap. There was some problem at the start, wasn't there? They changed the steering wheel and things and yeah, not not the start that she wanted. You know, when you 
you'd go change teams or change cars. You just want to show that that move was justified by producing a result straight away. Um, but, you know, all's not lost. She's got more time, and tomorrow's when it really counts. At the end of June, I was uh, talking about Jade being in one of the Brit Car Trophy races at Silverstone. She qualified the car on pole, dominated her stint, led all the way, handed over to her co-driver, and within a lap, mechanical problem, out of the race. You know, yeah. She just has no luck at all. She doesn't have any luck. Um, bless her. But, uh, yeah, let, let's hope that this change is for the better for her. Um, certainly, it's a team, obviously, one motorsport with far greater resources than Team Hard. Um, and that should translate into greater reliability and the opportunity, at least, um, to get some better results in the second half of the year. And it's the second half of the year, actually, that matters when you're looking to renew deals for, for the yes. following year. Uh, are, th are they camouflaged there? or is that, it's, it's very enterprising, yeah, sort of is. cocooned in that, yes. Yeah. Um, some good northern enterprise there going into <laughs> the, uh, the shelter. What the back of that shot does rather underline is just how blustery it is today. It is warm, but it's uh, quite a strong breeze, which again might affect cars around the circuit. Yeah, a little bit, particularly through the fast sections of, uh, uh, of, of Jim Clark S's and um, Barcroft, which is actually where Daryl De Leon went off. But that's a particularly different... We never get a good camera angle of, of that section of track, but the cars are at at top speed, 125, 130 yeah, mile an hour yeah. plus, whilst they're changing direction and braking. A lot of gravel down at uh, turn one. Uh, Marshalls, they're probably not so keen on this new system, are they? Um, of having <laughs> gravel right up to the edge, because although the cars are running wide, it just, it, it springs the gravel back across the track. Look at the mess yeah. that it's been made. I mean, it's an awful lot, isn't it? That's... Yes, rallycross not happening at Croft anymore, but we've come close in that yeah. session, as you can see how much has been brought onto the road. I so mean, that uh, is an awful lot. It is, isn't it? yeah. And of course, people hit the gravel and it flies everywhere. So the reason for this red flag is Daryl De Leon's accident down at uh, Sunny Inn. Here it is again, full speed. Yeah, really through Barcroft, the last kink to the right where he loses it. Side, at that point, it looked nasty. Oh, a very gentle tap into the barriers. <laughs> I, I would call that very gentle. <laughs> Uh, Dave is looking at me incredulous, um, having it, never crashed a touring car before. I, I don't believe you've crashed one either. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness, look at that. Now, there's the trench I that's think being that's, dug behind the kerb. That's the inside of Clervo, I reckon, turn one, where I said it's very difficult to pick up the uh, yes. the inside kerb. But, yeah, so right, turn one and turn two is a right mess, isn't it? It's just going back to Daryl De Leon's impact. That was quite a bang. But uh, right, the circuit is being sort of cleaned, ready for the resumption of qualifying. So we've got to get the circuit clean and also Daryl De Leon's car out of the way. Dan Camish then, the fastest. Will he stay there? Yeah, it's Father Peter Camish kneeling down, giving some words of wisdom. Um, to Dan Camish, obviously Dan Camish, very much the local boy. Not that he lives in Yorkshire now, but uh, born and bred in Yorkshire and uh, has a lot of family and friends support up here. So he'll be hoping that uh, positions don't change once the, uh, the green flag comes out. So it's Napa Racing 1, 2, 3. WSR did that at Snetterton last year, from memory. Uh, and Camish, Robottom, Sutton, the top three. Cook, fourth. Hill, fifth. Turkington, sixth. Aaron Taylor-Smith, as I was saying earlier on, a really good effort to be seventh ahead of Stephen Jelly, Aidan Moffat and Dan Lloyd to round out the top ten. Tom Ingram is only 12th, so he's another one to watch when we go live again. OK, so you're going to ask me now why are we slower than last year here, aren't you? Now, Tim, I, I noticed that we are slower than last year. Why would this be? Why did I set that up when I haven't got the answer? <laughs> <laughs> I think, that, I think that it's... summer break's gone to you, hasn't it? I, I think, actually, it's partly to do with track limits being it? so rigorously enforced now um, that there isn't the opportunity to get a bit of extra speed either through Turn 1 or Jim Clark S's. I, that's what I'm sticking to. Oh, that's a plausible explanation. Because, well, yeah. in fairness, the cars have always been quicker, haven't they, this year? Yeah, so yeah you're right. It, 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 I can't think of another... The track hasn't itself changed it's only the uh, parameters that uh, they're, they're driving to i think which have changed yeah pole position time last year 121 four and it's a 22 one at the moment from dan camish so it's not just slow it's, it's a quite chunk. a bit yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so the uh, team's getting ready for the resumption of the session daryl de leon's car is the one that we are uh, waiting to be brought back and there it is and then Team Hard will assess the damage. I think he can get in that and drive it back. 
Um, you wait till we see the other side yes. of the car. It'll look absolutely terrible. Um, Ma Matron, Harvey's out of bed again. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, as a result, though, having said not, I mean, the team running six cars, this is not what they want in terms of accident damage at this stage. No. But with Nick Hamilton having withdrawn, effectively, there's a car full of spares. Well, there, there. is that, yes, um, indeed. So they do have some extras. Ash Sutton on his toes. He is 27,000th slower than Dan Rowbottom and 0.193 of a second slower than Dan Camish. So it is incredibly tight. And just again to make the point, the leading 16 drivers all within a second. Uh, Sam Osborne is the 16th, and he improved just before the red flag came out. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that is quite something around a 1 minute 22 lap with um, a lot of different corners, a difficult driver's track. So it shows how competitive that is. Let's have a look further down. Pearson we talked about earlier. Still 13th, yeah. just behind Ingram. Ingram is going to be the one that wants to really improve in this last section, isn't it? He's the one perhaps we need to watch and see if he can pull something out of the bag. Aidan Moffat has retained that good ninth place so far. Um, so Pearson and Moffat, excellent uh, performances. Taylor Smith um, and the Power Max Vauxhall up in seventh place. Some good performances all the way down. Yeah, Aaron Taylor Smith was one that was grabbing attention earlier on. Uh, Andrew Watson's dropped a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Rory Butcher, 20th. One would have expected him yeah. to be higher up. It's Ricky Collard, I think I'm right in saying, who is the Toyota Trailblazer at the moment. But he is only 11th as uh, the drivers sit and wait. We haven't yet got the restart time, but we can't be too far away. No, I think the ones that uh, could improve will be Jade Edwards down in 25th at the moment. Um, uh, Rory Butcher definitely from 20th. Um, uh, Ingram from 12th could improve. Um, they'll be the ones, I think, to watch. Jade Edwards just focusing on a lap, ready to go. Bonnets up to get a bit of cool air into some of the engine bays as the mechanics are ready to pull the cars backwards and then fire them down the pit lane. So on the team's radio, when he has a time, Ian Watson will convey that, getting the recovery teams coming back towards the pit lane, but that car uh, only now being put on the flatbed. But that doesn't necessarily have to do the entire lap. That could go straight into the paddock from the, the bottom of the circuit. Yeah, lane. definitely. That could go. There's an access there into the support race paddock. Um, so that would, be, that would be quicker in terms of uh, getting us restarted. The pit lane here at Croft is actually the narrowest pit lane that we go to, even narrower than Knock Hill. Louise Turkington holding the, uh, the sunshade for Colin. Um, she's back on full-time duties helping Colin. Who is sixth in the times right now, and he needs to find just over four tenths of a second to get up at the very top. Now, as the fans await and the drivers await, that car of Daryl DeLeon, we still haven't really seen the damaged corner, but uh, it's heading back towards Team Hard, who won't be able to get it back out in these five minutes, but they'll have some work to do ready for race one uh, tomorrow. Remember that, of course, the timetable at Croft is such that you can't start engines until midday, so the first race tomorrow will be at 10 minutes past 12, and uh, fans finding themselves and a wave to the cameras as well. So it's a, a late, later start tomorrow to race action. It's going to be a busy day. We've got the uh, British Formula 4 Championship. The Minis are in town. So are the Porsche Caymans for the Sprint Challenge and the Legends as well, which have three races today and three tomorrow. Um, they were a little bit distracted at Brands Hatch, but uh, they always give good racing. Two minutes, as I gather, before things are back underway, ready for the resumption of qualifying. Are we anticipating much shuffling? Some shuffling. Yeah. Not much, but some. Some. OK. Right. Damage assessment, please. Uh, nasty left front damage. Right. Nasty left front damage. But easily repairable for a team with so much experience of repairing cars and so much skill as Team Hard. They'll have that out as good as new tomorrow. So Daryl De Leon's car into the barriers at Sunny. It has been retrieved and... Uh, that car then heading back towards the uh, paddock so it's off the circuit and therefore we can very shortly get things back underway so that car will come up through the support race paddock everybody else is either in the pits or 
uh, at the garage, ready to, to blast out. And so it's going to be Jack Butel, I think, who is first in the queue. Yeah, because they're not operating out of garages, they operate exactly. from the end of the pit lane. Yeah. So although we saw the BMWs come out first there, now they're working for the pit lane, uh, they'll come out first. There's um, Barry Plowman, um, legendary touring car engineer, my engineer back in 92, believe it or not, that far back, um, who's been in the pit lane with Dynamics all those years until they uh, they ceased uh, running and then uh, helped out with uh, Team Hard at the start of the year and is now at uh, uh, One Motorsport. Looking after his old cars, because that's the ex-Team yeah. Dynamics uh, set of Hondas. Right, yeah. so we're into the last 10 seconds before the session gets back underway. The One Motorsport engineers, the Speedworks next to them, ready to uh, push the cars and for those on the rear wing, pull the cars onto the fast lane. Green flag. So here's the mad scramble to get out, to get good track position and go for a time. It's quite a nice little formation look, isn't it, to that? Yeah. There's something quite nice about that. Ah, now, who's that in the Napa racing car? That's Dan Kamish that's staying in the pits. Bonnet up. Yeah, so that means he's not going out to try and improve his time. So it'd be an anxious five minutes for him, hoping no one beats his time. But he's still in the car, so is he waiting ah. to let the traffic go? And then maybe he'll be out of sequence, but he might be able to be in clear air. Good spot, yeah, good spot. Could Let's possibly see. be that. Let's see what he does. So there is Tom Ingram. So this is a man to watch, possibly the man. He's got the gold quick fit number plates as befits the reigning champion. But remember, he's only 12th fastest. So this is going to have to be one of those five minute blasts from Tom. Dig yeah. deep. And the way he came out of the pits vigorously weaving implies to me that he's got a pair of new front tires on the, on right. the car and he wants to quickly get them up to temperature. Yeah, look, he's really working hard. So there are some people with new tyres on. Uh, front wheel drive, probably just the front axle. We'll have to see. Look, you see, already we're only three and a half minutes left. The time goes so fast yeah. um, getting out of the pit lane. Uh, but this, he will really be one to watch. And he might just have one shot at it, might he, then, as Colin Turkington is going to be the first man onto a flying lap because he's got himself up past Jack Butel, who was the first one out of the pit lane. And Dan Kamish is still in the pit, so uh, it doesn't look like he is going to go out. There is Tom Ingram heading up towards Sunny Out, the second element of that right-hander down at the tip of the lap. But again, there's a whole wall of traffic ahead, so he's trying to let them go, but also trying to go quickly enough to get the warmth in the tyres. Yeah, that's why he was pushing hard through the fast corners, where you generate a lot of temperature. But you're right, there's a lot of cars going fairly slowly in front of him. He sets himself up. He goes out wide. I can see out of the uh, out of the out of the commentary box. He goes out wide to start the lap. Right. So here Dan, he is. Yeah, onto a flying lap now. Dan Camish has not joined in, so he could just about sneak out and do one lap if it were needed. But he'll only know that when it's too late. So down through Clairvaux goes Tom Ingram, rides the curb on the outside. He's got to be mindful not to try to catch up to the traffic. He may not have any say in that as he blasts through the chicane now. So let's see. It's a long first sector. Somebody's gone wide ahead and kicked up the dirt. But Ingram on a mission then as he goes down that back straight. He was right on the limit coming out of the chicane as he comes up to the first split now. It's not a fastest. It's not the fastest. It's about a tenth and a half away from the quickest, about a tenth and a half, but certainly good enough to move him up on the grid if the rest of the lap gets even better. But again, there's traffic in front of them. L working hard not to do track limits on the exit of the Jim Clark S's. This is where he's really quick, and it's it's one of the Power Max cars that's locking up in front of him. We've seen a couple of puffs. Again, he doesn't want track limits on the exit. He's coming up to the end of the lap. The two Power Max cars, he's closing on them very quickly. What was his second sector time? It was a personal best in sector two. So he's definitely going to improve if he doesn't get held up. Right, so an improvement is on the cards. That's better than nothing, but the problem is the next lap will have lots of traffic to worry about. So this might be his only real shot at it as Tom Ingram comes up towards the line. 12th at the start of the lap, breaks the beam now to go sixth fastest to 22.461. So Tom Ingram vaults up the order. Kamish sitting there counting the clock down. There's going to be another lap, lap and a half for, or maybe two laps for those that are, are on a lap at the moment. 
but equally for Ingram, as I say, he's got the traffic ahead of him, got the uh, Vauxhalls just up the road, and that might go against him being able to improve. Less than a minute on the clock now. Yeah, and he's a tenth slower than he was on the last lap in that first sector with traffic in front, so I, he's not going to improve on this lap. No, indeed. So that was worth all the effort then to go six. It's Camish Robot and Sutton. Michael Kreese has now lost a lap time. We've got a BMW off the road. It's Jake Hill down at Sunny. Jake Hill all over the grass. Sutton calls it a session. Camish calls it a session. I think Robottom has done likewise. So the Napa Fords pit. And Jake Hill, does he have a problem? Because he's not got back on the road in a hurry. No, oh, that's strange. He's, I know he's staying out of the way. Uh, Aaron Taylor Smith's on the personal best on, in sector one. He was one of those two Paramax cars. Not sure if it's the first one or the second one. Right, Sam Osborne stayed out. He's coming up towards the line. We had an improvement from Aaron Taylor Smith in the first sector, and he's looking to go quicker come the end of the lap. As here up towards the hairpin is Tom Ingram out of the complex of the hairpin. He's trying to let the Vauxhalls go, but he's going to get the chequered flag, isn't he? Yes, he is. So Ingram tried to let them go, but in doing so, dropped back too much. He takes the chequered flag, so Ingram ends up sixth. Yeah, he didn't have enough time on the clock left to, to drop back, and the, he yep. was trying to set up another lap, but he just he was a second too late, wasn't he? Yeah, it was a gamble. Sometimes it works. That time it didn't. So uh, Camish, Robottom, Sutton, it's another pole position for Napa Racing UK, a second of the season for Dan Camish. There's nobody out there being able to improve in the sectors, so... He can celebrate. Absolutely right. They, they're, not, they're not taking anything for granted, but he can... No, you think <laughs> no need, Dan. There's nobody going to touch you now. There's nobody going to touch you, I'm sure. Tom Ingram, lap disallowed. Now, that is the subsequent one. So he stays sick, panic over, but Tom Ingram and then also a lap taken away from Stephen Jelly as well. OK, so Jelly, he stays at ninth, though, at the moment. Yeah. This is Sam Osborne just coming up to the line. He's in 16th. He'll want to try and jump up if he can. Right, Ingram has been pushed down to seventh with the, the alterations to lap times. And I think pretty much everybody now has taken the flag, certainly those that could change the order. But Dan Camish now, I think, feels it's time to celebrate. Finally, yeah. he, he breathes out. Yep, yeah, job done. That was Pete Osborne behind him, <laughs> sort of put his hands on his head initially when Sam Osborne, his son, came across the line. I thought there was, there was disappointment for Sam, his yeah. son, but elation for, uh, for the rest of the team and Dan Camish in particular. So, an excellent job. So, they've done it again, um, just as we predicted. Um, and that's a racing <laughs> for pole position. Dan Camish, Dan Robottom, uh, Ash, call me Dan Sutton for third fastest. Josh Cook, fourth. Colin Turkington, fifth. Jake Hill, sixth. Tom Ingram, seventh. Aaron Taylor Smith, eighth. Stephen Jelly, ninth. Aidan Moffat, tenth. Good jumble grid. A very good jumble grid, um, apart from the three Napa racing cars dominating at the front. But that's qualifying's one thing, as we always say, racing is another with all three tyre compounds to use on, uh, on in tomorrow's races. I'm pretty sure the general pattern for those at the front will be to start with the soft tyre and work their way to the slowest tyre, the hard in race three. But here's your qualifying result. It's all a bit provisional, of course, but Dan Camish tops the times for a second pole of the season and a sixth of his career ahead of Dan Robottom and then Ash Sutton third. Josh Cook fourth ahead of Colin Turkington and Jake Hill. Tom Ingram seventh from Aaron Taylor-Smith. Stephen Jelly ninth and the top ten rounded out by Aidan Moffat. So Dan Camish then the uh, fastest. Dan Lloyd 11th ahead of Ricky Collard and then Ronan Pearson in 13th spot. Trot. Damn well done, pole position. How brave a decision was it to sit out that last five minutes? I'll be honest, I've never felt so naked in all my life. It was to sit there knowing you've got provisional pole and to watch, I think, almost every car drive out behind you. I actually said to uh, my team boss, I said, will you just come and talk to me? You know, just, just talk to me about anything. Just take my mind off it, because it's... I knew that I didn't have anything to improve with. Um, there wasn't going to be a better lap in this car for me today. So you got to sit there and hope that you've you've shot your shot at the right moment, and it means the world to me. This, I mean, some soul searching over winter and over the getting over the you know the break period, wanting to come back and get myself back in the right frame of mind and come out swinging. And one, two, three is an amazing, you know, an amazing um, feat for, for Napa Racing UK. Testament to all these guys who 
celebrating in the background. That feels absolutely incredible. And what does this signal that you might be achieving from now on in the second half of the season? It's been a long time, you know, I think, other than the wet, you know, performances. I've not had dry performance. It's been missing for some reason. We worked so hard in the off-season. What? It, and, uh, sorry, in the break. What? What is missing? Um, did we just find it? I think we might have done. But let's see if we can move on from here. Tomorrow's a big day. Dan Rowbottom sharing the front row. Nothing seems to be missing at the moment. I know. Well, it's only Dan's, isn't it? You know, we've been doing a podcast together, and we're going to do some content. And I think it's a great way to start it off. P1 and 2. Happy days. Yeah. Is that the answer? Do a podcast? Well, I think so. <laughs> we spent a lot of time talking about Alan Hyde. Enough. We did. Yeah, Alan Hyde's a trick, I think. But no, I mean, you know, for Napa Race in UK, it's be one, two, three. is amazing, isn't it? Um, we've gained some qualifying performance, thank God. We've lost a bit the last few events. A little bit like Dan, really. We've had, we've had great race day pace, but we've struggled a bit after Donington. So we've been chasing this man. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's bring in Ash. Uh, starting on the second row, how key was the hybrid or lack of it? It obviously, it definitely helps around here, but it's look, it's just no understatement to the, what the guys here at Napa Racing UK do, and especially these two, putting a mega lap. So, yeah, it's a nice lockout. Um, good for me, championship-wise. Obviously, Jake and, and Tom being behind, I'll take that. Yeah, heck of a qualifying session. I mean, you and Josh Cook were at it for a uh, lap after lap for a start. Yeah, I, when we jumped to, to first, then Josh took it, and then we got back to first. It's like, right. OK, and then these two rocked up. It's like, give me a break, boys. Come on, we haven't got any hybrid. But, um, yeah, look, I think it's three or four attempts, the, the hybrid side of things. But I'm just happy with the championship standings. It's, um, yeah, that's all we were focusing on. What everyone else does around us is, is up to them. Yeah. It's only a qualifying session, but does this feel it's got things back on the rails after Alton Park? Yeah, well, to say get back on the rails, the car's actually been pulled apart. We had to put it back on the jig. There's been a lot of work. There was a lot more damage. That we, that we realised after we did the tyre test. So the boys have had a hectic two weeks. Um, it's been back on a jig. There's been a lot of cutting and shutting going on to get back to where it was at the start of the year. Yeah. So, yeah, phenomenal job by them. And that, hopefully that pays them back. Yeah, we've seen the results today. Maybe we'll see the results tomorrow as well. Yeah. Ash and the team, well done. Dan and Dan Camish on pole position. Back to you fellas in the commentary box. Steve, thanks very much. Well done then to Napa Racing UK. Dan Camish, Dan Robottom, Ash Sutton locking out the top of the times then and uh, it's going to be a really lively first race because it's every man for himself. Yes, they work as a team, but they all want to win races, and, of course, Ash has to think about points. He really does, and it's such a tight uh, entry into turn one here. They really need a bit of cooperation off the line between them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, a great result there. And, and, and to be fair, to be two-tenths off the pole time for Ash Sutton when he's really lacking perhaps three or four tenths of uh, hybrid, that's a good effort from him. Frustrating session, though, for Tom Ingram. Yes, he was able to improve, but frustratingly for him, of course, he finds himself behind Ash Sutton on the grid. So uh, we know that his racecraft is good. He should be able to make progress. And, of course, uh, you know, he'll be able to work towards race three as well. So uh, potentially Tom Ingram uh, will be another man to watch tomorrow as the teams then now push the cars back to uh, the garages. The drivers and engineers will go off and study some data. There'll be all the usual hard luck stories that, oh, well, you know, I would have been quicker, but for the track limits or... Would have, could have and should have. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. And uh, Croft is going to be busy very shortly uh, with support races. You can see minis are plenty lining up uh, in the assembly area, and we'll see them on track here tomorrow. So... There is Tom Ingram's and uh, Tom Chilton's cars being pushed back into garages. Yeah, it'll be interesting to hear what the cause of that two-minute stoppage on track was for mm. Tom Ingram, yeah. wasn't it? So yeah. that's something we really want to find out, and, and hopefully that it's not a recurring problem. Yeah, I mean, um, that certainly put him on the back foot with, yeah. as you say, two minutes lost and a subsequent yeah. uh, pit stop after it. But, yes, they had to sort of work around that, and that, that just slightly got in the way of the run plan, didn't it? Dexter Patterson walks down the pit lane, uh, as the team hard cars are pushed into place as well. Another good effort that I think we touched on from Ronan Pearson. Dan Loy, double winner here last year, also being 11th, was uh, another good run. So uh, for Dan Lloyd, he's hopeful of a, a good result on home soil. We talk about Dan Camish, even though he's no longer based in Yorkshire, uh, but uh, Dan Lloyd very much is. Right, let's hear about Tom Ingram then. Weird session that for him. He's with Steve. A weird session, says David Addison. You can solve a few questions. What were the problems that you had out there? <laughs> if, if only I knew the answers as well. It just feels crazy low grip. Um, I don't know if that's um, 
I don't know if it's a combination of the day, you know, other cars are on circuit with different rubber, which we've seen over the years as well. I don't know, I just feel low grip all day. I just haven't felt like we've been, um, had a car that's got any almost life about it. You know, we, we turn in and we just don't seem to be having any feel. So a little bit of work to do, um, but. You, you seem to be on a hot lap and then stopped out there for a, uh, what seemed like 30 or 40 seconds. Just having a picnic, um, <laughs> just having a little picnic down. It's a lovely place to watch from, is Sunny. And if you ever come and visit, Sunny Inn's the place to watch from. Um, so by the sounds of it, it doesn't sound like you know what happened. So I could either own up to the fact I had a massive spin or I could just sort of own up to the fact that I just had a picnic on the outside of the circuit. Right, I'll right. I'll let you decide. Okay, well, no picnics tomorrow. So what is the task tomorrow? Uh, try and come forwards. Um, try and battle forwards. Obviously, the Napa guys are one, two, three. So we've a, we've a bit of work to do to catch those. In the past, I'd always have said, you know, that first lap is where we can where we can pounce off the start. But we've obviously got some some rear wheel drive BMs. They're vulnerable into the braking zone. So let's wait and see. OK, I'm not entirely clear whether that's answered all the questions, but uh, thanks very much and all the best for tomorrow. Should be a politician, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, Steve, I think Tom answered some questions, but not necessarily in the right order, but a valiant effort. Well done. Uh, so a massive spin. That answers the, the big time loss earlier on. So we will go racing tomorrow uh, with the first touring car race just after 12 o'clock, uh, but we'll be on air from 11.30 for a busy day of action from North Yorkshire. It's going to be a great day of racing as ever in the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. We'll see you tomorrow on ITV4 for today from Steve Ryder, Tim Harvey and David Addison. It's goodbye.